Today we want to take a little time uh, and put out this YouTube video to, to help you guys with the inline ripper. And I'm talking specifically to you guys with the vertical tillage program. Uh, talked to a number of people on the phone this week, been out to the field and helped set a few of these and thought probably a good time to do a YouTube video of this to help you guys making sure as we uh, start these inline rippers rolling that we're getting it done right. Now the first thing when we take a, an inline ripper to the field is to make sure that we have a reason to be out there. So a situation where today in the YouTube video we're going to be in corn stalks and most of you know that uh, our data says it's kind of hard to make tillage pay for itself ahead of a soybean. But this particular field though we're fixing a couple of problems. We've got a, a substantial amount of density layers and to the point where they're stopping roots. So we've identified this and we do need to take those layers out. We also have some traffic in this field due to a pipeline and uh, pipeline traffic. So we're going to try to reset this field so we can put it on its way back to uniform density and we're going to use vertical tillage. Now when we're running an inline ripper for vertical tillage, we have to have complete shatter. And that's what we're going to cover is how do we get complete shatter. For you guys running an inline ripper and following it in the spring with a soil finisher or disc, complete shatter isn't near as crucial as it is for the guys in vertical till. We need a uniform seed bed. We need a uniform shatter to get that done. And if we're going to level with our harrows, remember harrows level from the top, not from um, below. So that's going to be part of why this is different for you guys in vertical tillage compared to you guys that are in a horizontal tillage program. Probably the inline ripper is actually one of the easier tools to set uh, because visually you can tell when you're lifting. We need to lift uniformly from shank to shank. Now typically that's going to be about half your shank width. So if you're on 30 inch spacing, you're going to have to be around 14 or 15 inches in depth to get full width shatter across from shank to shank. Full width shatter looks uh, very uniform. You're going to see the soil come up like a wave and move through that machine. It's going to be a uniform lift from shank to shank. The shank isn't going to blow out. You're going to leave the residue on top. You're not going to be throwing a lot of soil up on top to bury that residue itself. So your goal is to keep going down until that happens. Now, in most cases, it's going to take about half your shank width to get that done. But in some soils, it'll happen quicker and you may only be able to go 13 inches deep and, and get full with shatter. Other soils, other years, depending on the moisture load that's out there, you may have to go the full 15 inches on a 30 inch spacing. But either way, no matter what your conditions are, you keep moving the machine down until you see the full lift that you see here in these pictures. The soil is picking up all the way across so we can see the corn stalks move up and flow through like they're on a, a, a wave uh, or a conveyor belt where they're feeding through there. Everything picks up and full, pulls back down on the other side itself. And that's what we're looking for, that kind of complete shatter all the way across with minimal disturbance of the residue. When we run an inline ripper too shallow in vertical till, it creates a lot of trouble for the corn planter, for the sprayer operators, because again, remember vertical harrows in the spring do all their tillage from the top. They level from the top, kind of like street and concrete. They don't run a knife or a shank below to shear off the untilled portion. We've got to have a minimum of four to six inches of shattered soil there at the surface itself. Why do we run inline rippers too shallow? Well, it can be a number of reasons. Sometimes we set the ripper in one soil type and we're reaching full shatter at 13 inches in depth. As we transition into another soil type, 13 inches may not do it. And we have to choose a depth that's gonna get full shatter across that whole field. Probably the number one reason we run an inline ripper too shallow is lack of traction or horsepower. So here in the last few weeks, we've been receiving some moisture if we lose traction and we can't move forward, then we start cheating the machine up. Again, we can cheat the machine up in horizontal tillage. We can't do it in vertical tillage. We got to shift down and stay with it or add weights. So again, just picking the machine out of the ground while it does move us faster isn't going to get it done. So how do we identify when we're running too shallow? Well, probably the first thing you see is the soil between the shanks dead center doesn't lift anymore. It stays put. And as soon as it stays, stays put, then at the shank, we start to explode. So we start to see a lot more soil boiling to the top. Instead of lifting, we're boiling out 
and we start to actually cover up that residue uh, right around the shank itself. So while it pulls easier, uh, we, we miss the wave. And then you might see intermittent wave where you're just right there on the line. So parts of the field it's lifting, barely lifting, and other parts of the field then it's not lifting at all. Typically though from behind you can tell it because the field starts to get darker uh, out there. So we start to leave these black streaks where the shanks are blowing out. Today we've run this machine deep and shallow to give you some comparisons. You can see when you look at it, again, typically the darker, the blacker the field, the shallower it is. So when we drive down the road and we see a lot of black out there behind an inline ripper, almost from the road you know it's been run too shallow. So a scenario where visually we can pick this up uh, as we watch it run through the field, as we get out there with the spade and uh, we should have uniform shatter, we ought to be able to stick that spade in all the way across the machine. We shouldn't find spots out there where we got to jump on that spade to get it in the ground if we get uniform fracture. Again, it's a unique tool that it can leave, uh, in this case, over 200 bushel residue and you can hardly tell the machine has been run in that field when it's run right from a distance compared to where it's run shallow itself. So that's going to be crucial out there. Um, again, it's probably the easier one to set. You just keep on moving down and shifting down until you get that full lift that we're talking about and then you know you're in the right spot for vertical tillage.